Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host, Brian Glaze Gibbs. And what I talk about, I talk about the good, I talk about the bad, I talk about the ugly. But most importantly, I think to talk about this, crime doesn't pay. Crime doesn't pay. There's no shortcut in life. Only thing right now, by taking shortcut, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up in a jail cell like I did. You know what? You're going to end up in a jail cell or you're going to end up in a graveyard at an early age because of stupidity. This is my ministry. I talk about the good. I talk about the bad. I talk about the ugly. Today, what I'm going to talk about, 40 years ago, January 13, 1982. January 13, 1982, 40 years ago. It was a Wednesday. And I can remember that as clear as day, you know, because you sit back and think about it. When you hear music, you hear a song come out. And when that song come out, you think to yourself, man, where was I at when that song came out? I learned a lot about music based upon where was I at when a popular song came out. So here it is. I can remember during that period of time, Luther Vandross was out. He was hot. He was talking about everything. A house, not a home. Okay, how can a penitentiary be a home? A penitentiary can't be a home for nobody. I'm not meant to live alone. Turn this house into a home. When I climb the stairs, turn the keys. Oh, please be there. How the heck can you turn the key? I don't have the key to the cell. Right now is, guess what? You know who have the key? The correction department. They open and close these gates each and every day. So imagine being 18 years old, leaving Rikers Island, January 13, you know what I'm saying, 1982. It was a blizzard. I still can remember five o'clock in the morning, cell crack. Most people get up to go to breakfast or they're getting ready to go to court. This particular day, I... Brian Glaze Gibbs was getting ready to go upstate New York to serve my time because I was wrong. I committed crime. I was out there throwing brick at the penitentiary for absolutely nothing. So here it is as me and all the other guys that went to breakfast. I was going to court, you know, go to the bullpen and they start calling out your name, separating you. You know, everybody that was going upstate had to go to one holding cell. They start strip searching you. Start shacking you up, getting you ready for that trip. Okay, as an adolescent, age of 16 to 20, right now is we in C-74. Guess where you're going at? You're going to a place called Elmira. Elmira, New York. Elmira Correction Facility. And I still can remember that, man. They shack us up, put on this bus. And guess what? It was a blizzard. A trip that normally would take four to five hours as we hit that highway guess what it took approximately 10 hours because he was driving through blizzard condition snow coming down as we left east Ermhurst, queens going up state new york to elmira i can remember it being freezing cold pitch black as me and 30 other individuals you know with these corrections officer armed heavily armed with a bulletproof vest we shackled like slaves and we gone to pay our debt to society. I can remember coming up to that big gray war, the guard shack. You got the guards up there right now with guns like, you know, probably AR-15, assault rifle. Making sure those that's supposed to be in, stay in. If you're trying to escape, guess what? They're going to gun you down. It is. We got there. When we got there, I can remember that door opening. And we going through that gate. I can remember getting off the bus. You know what I'm saying? Me and 29 others of my fellow, you know what I'm saying, inmates. We going through Elmira. Getting strip search. All your belonging. Getting strip search. Getting, you know, you, you got to hold, hold up your arm. You know what I'm saying? Period. Open your bar. Ah, they looking for contraband. Right now is you got to hold up your private part. You know, you got to turn around. 
Lift your left foot. Lift your right foot. Then you got to spread your cheeks. Do you know how much how embarrassing that is? Spread your cheek for another man. Come on, man. What part of the game is that? But this is the type of stuff that we set ourselves up for. You know what? When you go out there, want to be down, want to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Want to be part of the street life? Want to be a criminal? Guess what? That's what you set yourself up for. You know, got a strip butt naked in front of a bunch of other men. Holding up your private part, spreading it. Open up your butt cheek. What part of the game is that? It's not fair. You know, here it is. After you go through all that, you can spray. They give you, you know, their underwears. They give you green, state greens. Okay? Then right now, what you got to do is, you got to go through. You know what I'm saying? Arrow my reception. So from one part, you got to go through another part. Okay? And I can remember, man, getting to that cell. You know what? Hot. Hot in all our doors. You know, the heat blasting because it's freezing cold out there. You know, I can remember the very next day coming down. They open up everybody's cell. We go into breakfast. And right now, as you're going, you got to go through this reception center. And you got approximately 400 something inmates. 200 on one side, 200 on another side. And right now, is you talk about from the reception area, going through that big reception area, you know, that hole of over 400 and something convicted felons ready to go to their destination. We going through there. And as you going through there, guess what? You got every individual, all those guys up there, you know what they yelling? New Jack, new Jack, new Jack, new Jack. What they're talking about, they, they behind closed door, they behind the cells like this. And they on their gate, yelling at the top of their lungs, New Jack, New Jack. And what I'm saying right now is guess what? Here it is, you got guys that was with us peeing, going to the bathroom himself, scared to death. Because guess what? They ain't expecting nothing like this. This is not, this is real. You got all these guys, New Jack, New Jack. You scared to death. You scared to death. And you know what? Like I say, even as you're going through there, and I'm hearing some of the guys. That left probably a, a week, a month, two months before me. That I knew. Going glaze. Amazing glaze for East New York. You know, and here it is. You know, people was telling me ahead of time when you go through there, what's going to happen. So you somewhat psychological prepare. But if you're not prepared, guess what? You're going to be traumatized. Folks, listen, man. People, we got to understand, man. Who the heck want to be scared to death, man, in life? Who the heck want to be going through a, a maximum aid facility, going through reception center? you going through reception and people going, yelling, screaming, I'm going to get you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this and that. Folks, it's not worth it, man. Take it from somebody that know, man. This right here, man, being locked down on one of these, it's not worth it, man. Let me read an excerpt from the book, Beyond Lucky. Get your signed copy by emailing me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs. G-I-B-B-S-1201 at yahoo.com. I'm going to read an excerpt. Okay. On January 13, 1982, I was transferred from C-74 Rikers Island to Elmire State Prison, upstate New York. The ride to Elmire ranged from, you know what I'm saying, four to five hours. This particular ride took seven to ten hours because of the, the, the blizzard. I can recall about 30 other inmates and myself being shackled down on the bus as we headed into a snow blizzard. Upon arriving, all I could see was Elmira long, tall, and grayish wall with the big steel door. I was, I became inmate 82B82. I was the 82nd person, adolescent, that was registered that year. Okay, now, which designated as the 82nd inmate to enter Elmira in the year of 1982. I, I was prepared for what was coming. Okay, only a few months earlier, people write me telling me what to expect. As they slowly opened the large steel door and the bus entered, we was escorted off the bus into the facility, which was cold and wet. After leaving the bus, everybody was unshackled and strip searched. Next was the disposal of our clothes and being sprayed for bugs. After the spraying, 
We was processed, showered, given green uniform, underwear, and a blanket, and then shown to our cell. Man, I still can remember how hot it was that night. In the morning, we all left our cell, heading to the cafeteria. After eating, we headed back to dorm. A two-sided tear, three, four high, and approximately eight feet high. The cell was divided into two sections. Therefore, at any given time, there could be a total of 492 inmates, 246 inmates on each side. As I walked through, all I heard, all 492 inmates yelling at the top of their lungs. You know what I'm saying? New Jack, New Jack, New Jack. Keep in mind, these are all murderers, all robbers, burglars, rapists, arsonists. That was extremely scary feeling if you was not a seasoned prisoner. Some of the virgin inmates were so scared that they pissed on themselves. On that long walk to the cafeteria, for my stint in hell, raising hell on Rikers Island, as I walked through the jail, I heard fellow inmates that knew me calling my name, Amazing Glaze. Similar words would repeat themselves from time to time, reminding me of the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that save a Richard like me. I was once, I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I wish that was the case, but I was still blind. Folks, listen, man. I'm just telling you, man, like, when you sit back and you look at it, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, guess what? I allowed myself to become something that I wasn't. And you know what? I destroy, I hurt the woman I love the most. I hurt my mother, I hurt my step pop. I hurt, you know what I'm saying, my family. I hurt them because of what? My stupidity, because I was so selfish. I wanted to be down with the in crowd. Folks, listen, there's no such thing as the in crowd. You know the in crowd? You know what gang you should be a part of? Your family. That's the only gang you should be a part of. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your, your, your cousins. You know, your, your aunts, your uncle, your grandparents. That's the only game you should be a part of. Not no street hootlum thugs that's lost, that don't have a clue. Come on, folks. We as people have to be better than that. And like I said right now, as I reflect back upon what I've been through, you know what I'm saying? 40 years ago, man. Whoa. It's been a long time coming, man. And you know what? Like I said, I'm blessed, man. And I count my blessing. Like I said, I was once the problem. Now I'm seeking to be part of the solution, man. Like I told you, it's nothing cool. You know what? You think after I did three and a half years, I would have learned my lesson? You think I would have gotten it together? Like I say, I spent approximately 15 years in and out of this stuff. And right now, you think I became better? I became worse. Listen, folks, if you take shortcut, if you're looking for an easy way out, if you're trying to be lazy, want to make a fast buck, you know, want to, you know, hustle off the land the wrong way, guess what? Only thing going to happen to you, you're going here eventually. You're going here. You know what I'm saying? It all depends upon what you do. You're going there. You can either go there for a, a year, five years, ten years, or you can go there for your natural life. Is it worth it, man? Listen, take it for somebody to know. Crime doesn't pay. If I, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs, can change, anybody can change. And what changed me? I kept hitting my head on that wall. Boom. Hit my head on that wall. Boom. 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 Over and over and over again. And you know what? But nothing for being in love with materialistic things. You know? And that's what I'm saying, folks. It's more than life than that slick, that, that street stuff. The street life is for suckers. Hit that like button, subscribe, share. Like I say, this is real. Right now, I got a lot of good things coming. I got a lot of good, powerful things coming. No prayer, no power. Less prayer, less power. More prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. Peace, love, and prosperity. One love. Yo, Glaze, I just got to my favorite part of your book. This is Out of Prison as a New Person. So, page 308, May of 1998. That's actually when I had the pleasure of meeting you, and we worked together on that 10.30 to 3 a.m. shift, which was crazy. Um, my respect level just went up like 10 more notches for you. So I knew about your past, I knew about everything that had gone on, but what I didn't know is 
you were going from $40,000 a day to, I think we were making $12 an hour there in that night shift, something crazy. So for you to be able to have that work ethic of going from slanging easy rocks to slanging heavy packages and uh, working that night shift and just being the positive person you were that whole time and offering encouragement to everybody that worked that way. What up y'all? It's me, North Star, AKA The Codis. And I just wanna share with you this new supplement I've been taking, it's Panoxol. It's good for your heart health, which means your heart is pumping. You got a good flow of blood all through your body, right? You got stamina, you got more increased energy. Right? And when you're pumping in the gym, boom, hitting the weights, you feel strong, right? You feel alive, you feel vibrant. And when you're pumping in the bedroom, ah, ah, you're tearing it out the frame. Okay? So check this out. Tap in with me for the new Panoxol supplement, the good heart health.